Hi kids, do you like circuits? Want to see me explain Norton and describe its purpose? Want to relate Norton to Thevenin and revisit equivalence so you can do your homework and shrug off ambivalence? Linear bilateral circuits need simplification. Converting hard to simple needs more than equations. And when it's all done, if the load is changing, your calculations need minimal rearranging. So let's get started. Time is a wasting. So Norton's theorem is the dual of Thevenin's theorem, and it states that any linear bilateral electrical network can be reduced to a single current source in parallel with a resistor. Now a couple of terms there that you may or may not be familiar with. The first is linear network, and a linear network is any circuit where all of the components are, are linear components. And basically what that means is that the voltage is proportional to the current. And in dealing with DC electrical circuits, the types of elements that you can have in the circuit that are linear are resistors, voltage sources, and current sources. Those are the main three that we need to deal with. Now, the bilateral network is any network where it doesn't matter which way the voltage is applied, which what the polarity of the voltage is, the current w magnitude will be the same. So if I have, for example, just a block, it doesn't matter what this block is, and I apply voltage in this or orientation, current's going to flow this direction with a magnitude of I. Now, if I was to take that same block and reverse the orientation of the polarity, reverse the polarity like this, the current's going to go that way with a magnitude of I as well. Now, just as a sidebar, this theorem was developed independently by two different people in 1926. One of them was Hans Ferdinand Meyer, who was a German scientist engineer who worked at Siemens. And the other one was Edward Norton, who was an American engineer who worked at Bell Labs. So let's get back to the theorem itself. And considering Thevenin's theorem, which says that any linear bilateral network can be converted into a voltage source in series with a resistor, and recognizing that there's an equivalence, equivalency between voltage sources and current sources, Norton's theorem totally makes sense because the equivalency says that I can convert this voltage source into a current source that looks like that, where this current is equal to whatever this voltage is divided by whatever this resistance is. And this resistor is just the same, the same resistor value. So with this equivalency, I can convert from a voltage source to a current source. So knowing Thevenin's theorem, it totally makes sense that there's another um, equivalent theorem using, using current sources. Now let's go back to the very beginning of, of what Norton's theorem is. And it says that you can have any network, and let's just say that we've got a network in here that's got resistors, it's got voltage sources, and it's got current sources. So some number of those, and it can be really complicated, a really complicated arrangement of, the, of these. I mean, it can be a really simple arrangement of them as well. And, and Norton's theorem says that any, any complicated arrangement or any arrangement of resistors and current sources and voltage sources can be simplified down to a current source with a corresponding resistor in parallel with it. So the, the process of converting from this complicated circuit over into the simpler Nortonized equivalent. I really don't like Nortonized. Thevenized sounds pretty cool. Nortonized doesn't sound quite as cool. Anyway, to, to create the Norton equivalent re involves a, a number of steps. The first step is to identify the part of the circuit to convert to the Norton equivalent and then remove the load, the part that's not, that you're not Nortonizing, remove that from the circuit. The second step is just to label that port so that you can identify it if you ever make any changes to the circuit as you're analyzing it. The, the third step is to determine the Norton resistance, so that would be this resistance here. The fourth step is to determine the current. And the fifth step then would be once you've got that Norton current and that Norton resistance figured out to simplify the circuit, redraw it as the, the Norton equivalent. So I'm going to go through the details of those steps as, uh, as I work through an example here. So 
So here's the circuit that I want to analyze and come up with a Norton equivalent for. And this 100 ohm resistor over here is the load. So I wanted to come up with a Norton equivalent for this half of the circuit. So the first step in this Nortonization, if that's even a word, is to remove the load resistor. I identify the part of the circuit I want to convert to the Norton equivalent and remove the load resistor. The second step is to label the load ports. And this is just a step to, to kind of keep track of where that load port is, especially if it's a more complicated circuit and you need to keep track of it so you don't lose, lose your, so you don't lose track. Uh, the third step is to calculate the Norton resistance. And the way that you do that is uh, in two steps. The first is to zero all of the sources. And to zero the sources, I will convert all of the voltage sources to shorts and all of the current sources to opens. So this becomes a short circuit and this becomes an open circuit. And once I've done that, I figure out what is the equivalent resistance looking into A and B. In this particular circuit, that's a fairly simple calculation. I'm looking into A and B. I have a 250 ohm resistor in parallel with a 30 ohm resistor. And that equivalent resistance works out to 26.79 ohms. And that is my Norton resistance. The second step, or the, I guess I'm up to the, the fourth step now, is to figure out what, that, what the current source is, what the, the Norton current source is. And to do that, I replace the sources and then determine what the short circuit current is if I was to short points A and B together. So if I short A and B, my Norton current is that current flowing between A and B. Now this requires a little bit of circuit analysis. I think the way that I'm going to approach this is calculate the, calculate the source equivalents, the, the current source equivalents for that voltage source. So to do that conversion, the current source equivalents will be at 12 volts divided by 30 ohms. So my current source is going to be 0 0.4 amps and the resistance will just be that 30 ohm resistor. Okay, so I will replace this voltage source with the equivalent current source. So that consists of the 30 ohm resistor in parallel with the 400 milliamp or 0.4 amp current source. Now the analysis is pretty easy. This is a short circuit here. I have two current sources in parallel. So the total, the total current from them is going to sum together. I'll have 400 milliamps going here, 250 milliamps joining it at this node. That current's not going to go through either one of those resistors because I have a short circuit here. So that current is just going to flow between A and B. So it's 400 plus 250. I have 650 milliamps. 400 milliamps plus 250 milliamps, 650 milliamps. I've got the Norton current, I've got the Norton resistance. That means I can now redraw this circuit as the Norton equivalent. 600 milliamp current source in parallel with a 26.79 ohm resistor. And that's the Norton equivalent of this original circuit. Now, what I can do is, is complete the analysis of the circuit by putting the load back in. The load is a 100 ohm resistor. And if I put the load back in the circuit, I can now figure out what the voltage across the load is and what the current through the load is. 
This is a pretty simple analysis now. I have 60, 650 milliamp source, and that's going through both of these resistors. I can figure out what's going through this resistor by doing a current divider. So the IL will be 650 milliamps times 26.79 divided by the sum of those two resistors. 100 plus 26.79. And that works out to 137 milliamps. And the voltage across the load, again, very simple to calculate. That will be the current through the load, 137 milliamps, times the resistance of it, 100 ohms. And that works out to 13.7 volts. So just like the Thevenin equivalent, the Norton equivalent is a fairly simple process to go through. There's a number of steps, but it's very algorithmic. The probably the most challenging part will be either to, to, for the Norton equivalent is to figure out the, the current source value, the resistor value. There may be, there may be some complications there as well. But it's, it's, um, the analysis is using the circuit analysis tools that you already know. Kirchhoff's voltage law, current law, Ohm's law, superposition, um, you know, here we use the, the source equivalency. It's possible you need, may need to do a mesh analysis or nodal analysis if it's a really complicated circuit. But once you have it reduced down to the Norton equivalent, the whole purpose of doing that Norton equivalence is that if you ever change the load, the, the recalculation to figure out the voltage across the load and the current through the load is, is quite simple. It's just going to be a current divider and then, and then an, an, an application of Ohm's law. And that's about it for, for Norton's equivalent. Um, I appreciate your attention to this. Um, thanks so much for watching. See you next time.